Welcome back, everyone. Glad to see you. Uh, both John and I are glad to see you. I'm Carl Rosen. I'm an oculoplastic surgeon, neuro-ophthalmologist at Anchorage, Alaska, at ophthalmic associates. Been here for 30 years. Did my fellowship in Pittsburgh with Jack Kennerdale. I owe a lot to, to Jack, as well as Ron Bird, who was a former chairman at Einstein, where John and I met. We were co-residents. John? Hey, I'm John Ditkoff. I'm a general ophthalmologist that specializes in cornea. I'm in northern New Jersey, about 20 minutes out of New York City. And uh, Carl and I, as Carl said, trained at Einstein. We learned everything we needed to know, and uh, we've continued to practice ophthalmology and learn as we go. That's right. That's right. Lifelong learners. That's yeah. what they call us. So we're going to dive deep today into the science behind an interesting product called Mybo. And it's really designed for evaporative dry eye. So that's where your eye has, um, your eye liquid or the tears just evaporate too quickly. And this this drug, also known as Mybo, that's the, the trademark name, is chlor per fluoro hexyl octane, per fluoro hexyl octane ophthalmic solution. It's a new medication. Uh, there are two good studies that the FDA looked at and approved. And it's a different medication for dry eyes. It's, it's an interesting medication. That's why there's a lot of hubbub around it, a lot of interest. I'm interested in it. And we're going to talk about it. Um, so why does it have all this? Why has it generated all this buzz? Well, um, it, as I mentioned, prevents evaporative dry eye due to my Bohmian gland dysfunction. So my Bohmian <laughs> glands are glands in the upper and lower eyelids that secrete the surface layer or the lipid layer, the fatty layer that prevents evaporation. And the tear has three components. You have the lipid layer, the fatty, the oily layer, the aqueous layer, which is the watery stuff. That's most of the tear. And then right on the surface of the eye, you have this stuff called the mucus layer, which is made by the conjunctiva, the white part. It has little glands that you can't see. And the when you have mybomian gland dysfunction, you can get uh, a form of dry eye. Dry eyes really recognize the classic complaint is burning, burning, and um, there's lots of things that can cause it. Uh, certain medications can cause problems with dry eye, like antihistamines, um, uh, diuretics. Anxiety, antidepress antidepressant medications, heartburn medicines, beta blockers, sleeping pills sometimes, lots of medicines. And then there are diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, Sjogren's disease, um, blepharitis, which is what a lot of people get. Uh, it can be also related to rosacea and foods and medicines can trigger that. And then an entropion, which is my ball of wax where the eyelid rolls in and the eyelashes rub on the eye that can cause trouble. And even after LASIK, which is refractive surgery, you can mess around with the physiology of the eye and give you dry eye. Um, but I'm going to let John jump in and, and kind of fill in some of the gaps. John. Yeah, so what's interesting about this medication, Mybo, is it basically mimics the, the action of natural Mybum, which Carl was alluding to, which is that layer that stops evaporation of tears. So the majority of people that have dry eye have decreased tear production. And that's why they have dry eyes. So they put lubricating drops in their eyes and they feel better. But then there's definitely a subset of those people that either have both that and also a problem with, with evaporation. Or there's some people that really have good tear production, but the tears only last a very short while because they produce the tears and they evaporate. So that's, what, that's where this medication comes in. It's a prescription medication. You use it four times a day. There are some issues right now because it's relatively new in getting it covered and they have some discount programs and you got to kind of go on the internet. But the bottom line is it's a, nice, it's a nice extra tool. Like I'm a dry eye specialist. So it's a very small bottle. People are used to big bottles of artificial tears. These are tiny bottles. It's only three milliliter. And, um, you and it, costs, it, 
It costs yeah. a lot of money, right? It's a lot of money if you're going to buy it on your own. But how and much is it if it, on your oh, own? It could be, a, it could be a thousand dollars. It could be a crazy amount of money. Nobody's going to, truthfully, most people are not going to pay the money. Right. What's going to happen is either the insurance is going to start covering it, and then that'll be wonderful. Or at the beginning where the insurances are giving you a hard time, there's these discount programs that you could pay as little as $0. Uh, because, you know, it's kind of like the way the stasis started and all these other medications where you got to really use the discount programs. And that's really the key. Right, Eventually, right, right. the insurance companies will come around because it is FDA approved and it has a role. Uh, so the thing is, what I was alluding to before is, so the way I look at my patients that have dry eye you know, we will do Shermer tests, which is a way to check tear production. But the truth is, we don't do it that often. I can actually look at someone at the microscope, the slit lamp, and see that sometimes you actually see evaporation. You see the moisture just evaporating from the surface of their tear. So that's really the people that do the best with this. What, what this medication does is it creates this thin layer of moisture. And what's interesting about this artificial tear is it's not um, a teardrop. It's like everything else that dry eye patients use are actually teardrops. Um, this is not, it's this, it's this thin layer that basically creates this blanket overlying your tear film. And by doing that, your natural tears stay in the eye longer. Or if you put an artificial tear in your eye, it'll stay in there longer. You can still use this with all the other treatments you do for dry eye. You can still do it with your astasis or your zydra or your plugs. It's just one additive thing. So like I have some patients, for example, that do really well with very thick lubricating drops because the drop goes in, it's very viscous and it creates this extra tear film. This is actually somewhat better than that in that you could put an artificial tear in that doesn't blur your vision and then you put this viscous thing on. Now, I mean, having said that, still the most common treatment I do for dry eye other than lubricating drops is plugs. Plugs theoretically do a similar kind of thing in that maybe they don't stop the evaporation of tears, but the other way that tears leave is through your tear duct. So if you block the tear duct, now the tears stay on your eye longer. So I think that along with plugs, I think it makes sense. Now, but I haven't used it that much yet. It's only been around a short while. Uh, people that I know that use it, cornea specialists like myself, have reported 70% of the patients improving. So that's pretty impressive. The side effects are very minimal. Uh, some people get blurred vision. Some people get a little uh, redness. Uh, some people are allergic to it, so yeah, I mean, you got to be cautious. But it's really a very well tolerated medication to try. It could take about 15 days to start to work, and between 15 days and about 57 days, people have seen improvement, and then it starts to plateau. So if you want to use it, you really want to give yourself about two months of treatment before you give up on it. Uh, so I think that's a pretty good summary. I mean, in my mind, God, I heard there's no preservatives. In my yeah, opinion. no, it's preservative free, so it's very well tolerated for most people. Uh, I think you know, you just want as a dry eye specialist that have had so many patients that are frustrated over their dry eye, it's kind of nice to have one more option. You know, we keep these really smart people keep coming up with more and more options for, for treatment. Yeah, and yeah. I'm looking forward to trying it, I'm looking forward to doing it on the patients that are not doing well and all these other things. We've right, had right. videos now about Tirvaya. We've had videos. We're going to be talking about Xdemvi, which is another alternative, which really targets blepharitis, but those are people that also have dry eye. So it's exciting for all these new treatments. For, you know, old guys like me to have to still learn new stuff and bring stuff out in our daily regime. It's kind of nice. Right, right. It forces us. Um, so I think I wouldn't use it if you're pregnant or if you're breastfeeding. That's probably a good thing to think about. But so that said, the benefits of MIBO can't be ignored. Uh, yeah, one other thing, Reg, there's some warnings about contact lens wear with it because it's kind of creating this tear film. We don't know if it's going to affect the fit of the contact, things like that. But I, I mean, I think it's more of a warning. We'll have to kind of see what the experience is like. Gotcha. Gotcha. Thanks, John. That was great. So MIBO can't be ignored. Uh, we're, John and I are using it. We're checking out the lay of the land, see how it fits into the regimen and our, our treatment protocol. But it offers a new avenue for patients struggling with evaporative dry eye due to meibomian gland disease. It's fast acting, it's relatively safe, we think, and it provides much needed relief for those whose dry eye 
doesn't respond to traditional treatments like artificial tears. So it could be a real game changer for lots of folks. And um, then again, you're not using it in lieu of other things. You can use it additionally to it. But if you happen to be a really unique patient that only has evaporative dry eye, meaning you have pretty good tear production, you have no inflammation, and it's just evaporating too quickly, you might get away with just that one medication. Right, right. So thanks for tuning in to Einstein's Eyes, everyone. And let's go Mets. Let's, let's go, go Mets. Mets. Right, right. Mets and we'll see. All we'll right. Go. Root, help John. Root, root, pray for John, the Mets. We'll, All right. we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks again. <laughs> We'll be right